All right, what's going on today, YouTube? Welcome back to your favorite cyclist YouTube channel. This week, we are talking about my brand new bike I just picked up. But before we get into today's video, if you are new to my channel, make sure you head down below, hit that subscribe button for me. If you already are subscribed, make sure that little bell icon next to that is checked off. That way you get notified every time I upload. That way you don't miss this awesome cycling content we got on this channel. So what bike did I get? I got the Poseidon Redwood. So here it is, my new Poseidon Redwood. Now, if you watch my channel for probably the past six months, I've talked about there's one bike that's missing from my fleet, and that was a dedicated gravel bike. Of course, I have mountain bikes, I have a road bike, I have a fat bike even, which was kind of an accident that I bought, but I have all those different bikes. Really, the one I'm missing was the gravel bike, and really, that's the hottest thing right now is a gravel bike. So being able to have that in my bike fleet gives me an option to connect to you guys, be able to share what the hottest thing is right now, which of course is gravel bikes. So why did I go with the Poseidon Redwood? So obviously it looks a lot different than a gravel bike, at least you would picture in your mind. Generally you picture a gravel bike, you think of something that looks like a road bike, but it has like a little bit more aggressive of a road style tire. Nothing like this, nothing has a mountain bike size tire, nothing that's a 2.35 inch wide tire. Definitely not something you'd imagine. It also generally doesn't have as many attachment points as this bike does. So why did I choose the Poseidon Redwood? The reason is the Poseidon Redwood matches my style of riding perfectly and shares the point of a do everything, go anywhere style of bike. For instance, for me, I ride mainly mountain bike is what I do. However, I have a road bike for fitness. Now, where I live out here, in good old Reno, Nevada here, obviously there's tons of trails everywhere you go. However, you have to ride on the road to get most of those little trails or most of those gravel roads. They are all over the place and it makes a lot of sense up here to ride a gravel bike and a lot more sense than a road bike. On a road bike, there's only so many places you can go without feeling like you're gonna die by a car every time you turn or every time you turn a corner. So having the gravel bike, being able to go out on a road, go out riding on the road to wherever you're going, hit a dirt trail that's off to the side and just keep going and exploring is an amazing experience. So I said this bike is a go anywhere, do anything style of bike, and that is truly the case. This bike, because of the way it's set up, it rides very much like a road bike. It feels like a road bike. However, the second you hit a dirt road or a dirt trail or whatever that may be, a sing single track, it rides like a mountain bike. It rides just like my Superfly does on the mountain bike trails, and it rides just like a road bike on the road. It's an incredible experience. It's something I didn't think I would ever get to feel, but. This bike does that all. So let's bring you over a little closer. Let's talk about the features on this Poseidon Redwood and what makes it so great. So if you've seen a road bike before, you've seen drop bars. They're generally about the same. They all look roughly about the same, right? They just drop down and they're right, you know, in line with each other. And they're made to be aerodynamic. Definitely not the case with these. These are a little bit different and these are probably one of my favorite parts on this bike. And that's going to be the design of the handlebars. So the handlebars do a nice swoop back and they swoop outwards is what they do when you come down. So as you can tell, our levers are at angles here and so are our bars. Our bars actually come down and swoop back from there. So what that does, is of course, it gives you multiple positions just like a regular drop bar would, but it also gives you the option to be in a wider position, in a more aggressive position, something a little bit more suited towards mountain biking. So on my road bike, generally I'm right here up on the top of the bar or I'm right here on the hoods, but mainly I'm up here on the top and that's just because that's where it's kind of comfortable for me to ride on the road. On this bike though, that's the complete opposite. I spend most of my time right here over on the hoods. I spend enough time here in the drops and I spent just as much time right here on the very end of the handlebar and it is ridiculously comfortable being right here feels just like my mountain bike gets my chest to open up and really feels like you get kind of a second wind when you're down in these drops on this bike and I love the look of them they make it look really aggressive and really they give you a different feeling and make you feel like you're doing something cool and strong so next let's talk about drivetrain on this bike so this bike is a 1 by 10 drivetrain it uses a good old microchip advent x on here which is something a little bit different I use the microchip Advent on my Trek Superfly, which is my mountain bike, which is a one by nine setup. And I have I've actually enjoyed it. I've used it for about two years and I've really enjoyed the quality and the feel of Microshift. I have never used it on a road bike before and I'd say very few people have actually used it on a road bike before. And it's a very different, but it feels very smooth and very good for this bike. And the way you shift it is really the thing that makes it feels so different than anything else. Generally with a SRAM or a Shimano shifter, the lever itself is your shifter. This one, the lever doesn't move. The lever is actually just there. Instead, you have these two paddles right here and right here. And those are actually your shifters. Bigger lever to move to a lower gear and a smaller lever to move to a higher gear. 
and they feel really solid. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it is definitely something that makes this bike a little bit different, and a little bit more aggressive. It makes you want to stay right here in the drop where you're able to access both of those really easy, but you can still access them from the hood as well. Well, thing I come to really like the feel and the experience of shifting on the Microshift Advent X. Along with that, it does have a clutch derailleur on the back. The Microshift micro Advent X is a clutch derailleur on this bike, so it does have that clutch on there just like you would find on a mountain bike. So it keeps that chain from smacking around while you're ripping around off-road. Even if you smack a pothole riding down the road, it keeps that chain from smacking around and hitting your frame and making chips and possibly derailing. It does a really great job of that. Okay, so it's time to address one of the big elephants in the room, and that's, of course, the tires. These tires are absolutely not what you'd expect to see on a gravel bike. These tires here, this is a 27.5 wheel, and the tires themselves are a Kenda 27.5 by 2.35. They are a pretty massive tire. They're almost as big as what's on my Superfly itself, and a little bit more aggressive than what's on my Superfly. So I'm like, what's the point? Why would you want such a big fat tire on there, but you'd, why run a 27.5? Like what makes, how does that even make sense? A lot of things are just like, well, how does that work? And again, that comes down to the do anything, go anywhere type of bike. This bike is able to take on sing basic single track trails very easily. So it'll take on gravel roads. It's really set up to go wherever a mountain bike wants to go and wherever a road bike wants to go as well. So it's set up for everything in there. Now, if you're riding mainly road or mainly just gravel roads, these tires are probably a little aggressive for you. I'll be real. They're probably pretty aggressive and you can obviously switch that. So this bike being set up as a 27.5, one of the big benefits of this bike and with the frame room here and the frame room here, you can easily put a set of 700C wheels on here and be able to run those no problem at all. They will clear this. You'll be able to run a 29er tire if you wanna run that and you would have no problem running that as well. So you have tons of options out there for how you wanna ride the bike. So you have all those options out there making this a super versatile bike. You can set this bike up however you like. If you wanna ride it more like a mountain bike, you can run it like this, like a mountain bike. If you wanna ride it more like a road bike, you can throw a set of 700C wheels on here and run it like a road bike or just your standard gravel bike. You can do whatever you want. You want a little bit better rolling on there? Throw a set of 29 inch wheels and throw some 29er tires on there and you are set to go with that case. But for me, I've actually found these Kenda tires to work very good. They don't, they don't tout their tubeless. I've set these up tubeless though. So the wheels that come on this are tubeless ready. So all you gotta do is buy your rim tape from there, buy some sealant and the tires pop right on. The tires definitely don't say they are tubeless ready, but they seat it up perfectly fine for me. And you'll see that in a future video when I show you guys the setup on this bike, but the tires are set up tubeless on this and I had no issues with that at all. Now let's move on to the brakes on this bike. So of course you're thinking, oh, this must be hydraulic disc brakes, right? No, this bike actually comes with mechanical disc brakes on it. And now I've talked trash about mechanical disc brakes. I've talked trash about Tektra on my channel. However, this bike comes with what appears to be a dual piston mechanical disc brake on there. And that means that essentially both those pads move in at the same time as you pull the lever and pretty much apply brake pressure to both sides. And it works really well. I have yet to be disappointed with these brakes since putting them on. They work well. Obviously, they're not as amazing as stopping on a dime as hydraulic disc brakes are. But for the simplicity of this bike, it works really well. And going along with what I've said is this bike is a go anywhere, do anything kind of bike. And I've mentioned on my channel that if I was to have a go anywhere, do anything kind of bike that would be set up more towards going out and adventuring, I would want a mechanical disc brake on my bike. And the simple thing is, it's easy to change that cable while you're out there. The cable breaks or you're having problems, you can swap that cable out like no issue at all. Versus hydraulic, you have to deal with bleeding your brakes or dealing with hydraulic problems while you're out in the middle of nowhere and not able to get that fixed. It's a lot easier to find yourself a new cable throw that on and get yourself back out riding. And the brakes on this bike, they're both 160 millimeter rotors, which for this bike and for the terrain and for the riding I have done on this, which has included both on-road and off-road riding, those have been the perfect size. I haven't felt like I needed a larger rotor at this time. And I haven't felt like I needed to change out the brakes to hydraulics all of a sudden. The mechanical disc brakes on this bike work great. They adjust great and they feel really good once you get them adjusted properly. And so again, you will see that when I set up the bike, I will go through how to adjust those brakes and get those working perfectly. So let's talk about mounting options on this bike, which is one of the big things about this is this thing has a ridiculous amount of mounting options here. So I was got one bottle cage mounted right here. This is a separate model cage mount right here. There's another bottle cage mount right here. There's yet another one here on the bottom down tube. And then you have a three bolt mount on both sides of the fork. You also have mounts for a rack on the back. And the amount of mounts that this bike has and the amount of versatility you're able to have with how you mount stuff, how much you carry, what you carry, where you take this bike. 
This makes this bike, a, again, a good adventure gravel bike. You're gonna be able to bring your camping gear with you, go on a bike tour, whatever you wanna do, and carry all that stuff on your bike for someone to carry it on your person. It makes it much more fun when it's on your bike. You don't have to deal with it. It has the mounts already there. You don't have to strap anything or do anything weird to your stuff to get it attached to your bike. It has the mounts and it's ready to go. Now, ultimately, for myself, I'm going to experiment with all these different mounts. There's a lot of stuff I have never tried before because I've never had mounts. I've never had fork mounts like this on the fork. I've never had four water bottle cage mounts. It gives you a lot of options for what you want to do, how you want to carry your stuff, how you want it organized, how you want your stuff laid out on your bike. It gives you all those different options to ultimately customize it for you. The other amazing thing you guys might be able to see it here are these mounts right here right here and there's one more down at the bottom those are actually mounts for the cable for an external dropper post that's right this bike comes ready to accept a dropper post obviously it doesn't come with one from the factory but you could easily set this bike up with a dropper post and have those mounts right there to run your cable nice and cleanly it'll go into the frame down here and come right out up here and you'll be able to run that cable up mount it to your handlebars and you have a dropper post ready to go which just shows this bike is as much a mountain bike as it is a gravel bike as it is a road bike it is capable of whatever you want to do with it so is there anything i would change at this point so obviously besides for the main contact points which have already changed which would be my crank brother egg beaters for the pedals and then of course they changed the side a lot to a WTB, wtb pure just for my comfort and my preference those have been changed the handlebar grip is a little thin but that can easily be changed as well it's one of those contact points it's nothing it's not a fault to poseidon at all as for the actual bike i have no changes that i feel it need to be made to this bike this bike out of the box is ready to go and if i could use one word to describe this bike it would be an adventure and that's what this bike is made for it's made to take you on an adventure and to enjoy your time out riding and just get lost in riding again and for me it's been a while since i felt this excited and this comfortable riding on a bike and just being able to go and explore. It's really since my Superfly's first drivetrain that I had, the three by 10, I, I have felt that I could, I could have a bike where I could just go out, ride and explore and just want to keep riding and exploring more and more and more. And this bike, allows me to do that and makes me feel that way. So I would like to give a big thanks to Poseidon and Luis at Poseidon for sending out this bike so I can show it to you guys, showcase this bike and show you the amazing things that happen with this bike. It is an awesome experience. I look forward to sharing more about this bike and more of the things we do with this bike. I have lots of stuff planned with it and I'm looking forward to sharing all of that with you. If you guys are interested in checking out more of Poseidon's bikes or even the Poseidon Redwood, I will have a link in my description down below so you can take a look at them yourself. The quality of the bikes they make for the price is going to be the best bang for your buck. With the prices bikes are going for nowadays, Poseidon keeps them, keeps the price real, keeps it a low price, and yet equips them in a way that they are set to go out of the box and ready for adventure. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, appreciate the support. Any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Love talking to you guys, love answering any questions you guys have, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching today.